y'all, it's me Alex. Today I am here doing my 2018 favorites video. Yeah, I don't think that needs a whole lot of explanation. I haven't actually done a favorites video in general for a while, but I do have a lot of stuff. Some of it you might have seen on my channel before, some of it you might have not, as you know, I don't use everything that I use in real life on my channel and kind of vice versa. So yeah, I have a bunch of stuff here and I have a feeling that this video is going to take a long time but also like you could probably see the timestamp going into this when you clicked on the thumbnail so uh yeah I'm just gonna get started. Okay so I'm gonna start off with eyeshadow palettes so I have a whole bunch here I'm gonna try and do it in kind of order that I've gotten them. Uh, the first one I'm gonna go with is the Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute Palette. I mean, if you haven't seen this around the YouTube, the internet, this is what it looks like. It is so, so cute and so pretty. I love these colors. This is the only pastel palette that I have that really looks good on me. This is the reason that I'm like, I feel good about being able reason that I feel good about being able to declutter my Kat Von D Pastel Goth palette because this is kind of more what I wished like that would have been. The only shade I'm not a fan of is Strawberry Milk but that's just because on my skin tone it just kind of blends in and it doesn't really look like a whole lot so um, I don't know that just wouldn't have been my shade of choice but you know not every palette has to work for every skin tone so I'm not mad at that. I am especially a big fan of like the cool tone shades so Take a Hint, Planchette, Creep It Real, and Cold Shoulder. All of those are really nice shades also Strobe Cosmetic shadows are consistently so so very good. What I mean by that is like everything that I've ever tried from them so I had their American Horror Story palettes and those were all shimmers and those were amazing and these mattes practically blend themselves which you might see is going to be kind of a theme for me in this video because I love mattes that blend themselves and I think this has been a really good year for finding some good eyeshadow formulas especially in indie brands. So this has been really amazing and I love the fact that they included a matte black which is kind of what was missing for me from the pastel goth palette so I can kind of like relive some of my high school days because my look was always like putting a matte black in the crease and the outer corner and then just putting like some sort of bright eyeshadow on the lid and I was very pastel goth when I was in high school so yeah this kind of helps me relive that but in a more kind of grown-up blended way. The next palette I'm gonna rave about is the BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival palette. I think this is so gorgeous but it was limited edition so I kind of hesitated in bringing it up but I also know that just because something's limited edition doesn't mean that people didn't get their hands on it. A lot of people got this palette and I think it is so fabulous. This is what I think a good mix between colors and neutrals in a palette should be because as you can see like you have the more neutral natural shades there's like a good variety of colors in here it's not just one pop and what I also appreciate about it is too is that they do a good mix of mattes and shimmers as I mentioned in my eyeshadow palette sins video one of my biggest pet peeves is when a palette has is like neutrals with pops of color but the pops of color are only shimmers and so the fact that even if you wanted to do like a monochromatic look you could pair like Palooza and Ultimate together where you could probably do kind of like swag and wicked you know stuff like that you could kind of pair those together and get kind of a full-on look you're not just limited to doing like a bright shimmery pop of color on the lid and then a matte neutral shade in the crease you're not limited by that with this palette I think this was done so well and the mattes are done really well too so I'm gonna swatch them real quick I'm swatching swag and Palooza and honestly I know colorful mattes are so like difficult to do or at least that's what people claim but look at these these are so pretty the mattes blend so beautifully and normally I find like you know a bright blue or a bright purple matte to be kind of like patchy or whatever but this one really isn't this is such good quality I kind of wish that they would bring it back just because like even though I know it was meant to be a limited edition this is really really well done the next palette of mine that was a favorite for 2018 is the Menagerie Cosmetics Dragon Child palette they are formerly Makeup Monsters we've been through that already this is what it looks like and I am just so happy with it. It is completely vegan which is honestly one of the biggest draw-ins for me because there's not a lot of like vegan red shades in there and it doesn't stain which is a problem with a lot of vegan reds so I really like that. I love this color scheme. I love all of the blues and greens and kind of mixing that with the purples and reds 
and this is just kind of like my ideal color scheme. It allows me to be very very creative with what I have and while the Feral palette hasn't reached like one of the best palettes of 2018 for me yet just because I'm still kind of testing it out, I love pairing the two of these together as you will have seen in like my holiday cut crease video. I think that this is just such a beautiful palette. The shades are really nice and I know a lot of people don't like how pigmented they are. That's personally a draw in for me because I'm the kind of person who really likes to like pack on shadow, you know, just kind of work with it like that. That's how I do my makeup. Not everybody does. I like to pack on and then blend it out. Some people like to build it up. If you're a build it up kind of person, this probably isn't for you. But since I'm I'm not a less is more, I'm not a build it up kind of person, this palette is very much for me. <laughs> the next eyeshadow palette favorite is the Viseart Dark Mattes palette. I finally made my first ever Viseart purchase this year and it was this palette and I am so so happy with it. So I was able to get it during like one of the Sephora sales when also um, Viseart was doing some repackaging so they were discounted trying to get rid of some of their old stock so I ended up paying about 60 bucks for this like including shipping which for an $80 palette is like not bad because that's about 25% off. This is what it looks like. I'm sure you've probably seen this. I've used this in so many videos. While I don't think it would be worth the full $80, I think it was definitely worth the full $60, especially for someone like me who this is kind of the general color scheme that I kind of work within, especially when I don't quite know what I'm going to do with my makeup. This is a really nice palette for me to just kind of go into. Everything that I've ever done with this palette has always looked good, which is obviously something Thing you want out of eyeshadow. I love using this little like warm tone quad up here to do my eyes. I also really love these smoky dusty purples because one of my favorite things to do when I don't quite know what else to do with my makeup is to just do like a smoky like a purple smoky eye. I think that is so so universally flattering and you can get a kind of a lot of like one shade similar shade type looks with this palette which I really like but you can also mix it up if you want to. Uh, the only shades that I haven't gotten a lot of use out of are the two browns up here, but that's, look at me, do you, do I look like I wear a lot of browns? No. But like the rest of this palette is something that I definitely get a lot of use out of and I think is it's just fabulous. The last two palettes of the year that I've been loving are from Colourpop. The first one that I've been loving is the Good Sport palette. This is what I have on my eyes right now. And this is my first ever palette purchase from Colourpop is this. You will have seen in my collection dissection video that I was really, really interested in this and I really wanted to like get my hands on this because this is one of the first color schemes I've seen done by Colourpop that really just appeals to me because I love the earth tones but also like the greens and the purples in there and I think it's just such a nice mix. It was such a good fall palette and I think it was a really good release for them. And I also now fully understand why everybody raves about Colourpop shadow quality because quite honestly this is so so easy to work with. Today I'm wearing High Hopes, Hooky, Ebb, and Reckless, and Wild Out on my eyes and they blend together so nicely. It just works. Colourpop shadows are so good and I don't know why I haven't tried them sooner. Actually I literally just stayed away because color schemes but it's good. And the last little palette that I've been loving this year is the Colourpop Pretty Much palette which is this this it's just this cute little berry tone palette. I saw Angelica talk about this and I was like okay I need this. Kind of like the Viseart Dark Mattes palette, this is a really good palette for me to kind of turn to when I want to do something like cute with my face but I don't quite know what colors to go for, what I want to do. Because this, you know, just about anything you do with this little palette is going to look good. I love kind of just putting this shade in the crease, this on the lid, and kind of using this to deepen up the outer corner and put this in my inner corner. I think that is just such a good combination, these two shades. I don't use as much but they're definitely... Like I've still gotten some good use out of this. This is just such like a sweet little palette and I think it was like eight dollars and I would say that if you're trying to like work yourself into getting more color in your life and you want to try like some berry tones because I think berry tones are really universally flattering. I haven't met a single person who doesn't look good in berry tones. So if you're trying to get into some color I would really recommend trying this as you know kind of a way of working yourself into it because the shadows are really nice, they're really pigmented and I think if you want to try something new berry tones are a nice way to get into that. Uh, you can't see it as well on swatch because my lighting is weird. 
but this shade right here is so beautiful and so metallic and I think it just it's just beautiful this is just a really good palette and I 10 out of 10 would recommend spending like eight bucks on it so like if you're if you're ordering stuff from Colourpop and you want to you know you need something to get the free shipping do this now to move away from palettes I have some eye eye adjacent products so the first one that I'm going to talk about is the Mazzy Cosmetics pigment in Anal which is this like bright limey acid green and I just love this shade so much I love the Mazzy Cosmetics pigments that I've picked up but I especially love this one so you'll have seen in my full review of this that these pigments are really good for someone who is just kind of like dipping their toes into loose pigments you don't have to use a glitter glue you can just use your standard eyeshadow primer and you don't have to worry too much about it that's what I really like about these is because you don't have to fool with it too much and I love this shade because this is also kind of one of those really easy one shadow look type shades if that makes sense so I like just throwing this on maybe throwing another pop of color in the inner corner and just doing some wing liner and mascara and like going out and being good to go. This is like six bucks, so it's super inexpensive, and the owner of the brand is also really, really nice. This is just so pretty, and I love it. And if you wanna try some loose pigments, I 10 out of 10 would recommend this brand. This is a Holy Grail product that I found this year, and it is the Distinction Brow and Lash Pomade in Peacock. I'm gonna pull my bangs away a little bit so you can see my brows. This is what I use on my brows on a daily basis now. This is essentially like dip brow for people with colorful hair and I just love it. This entire brand is made for people with funky hair colors so you can kind of find a brow product in just about whatever color you want to match your hair or to not match your hair or to just to just have some fun with. They were doing, they're like the original colorful brow company before Kat Von D did it. And so I've done like a demonstration video using this in my brows. Let me show you how much like you can kind of see how much use I've gotten out of this. It is just such a wonderful product. I feel like it matches my hair perfectly. And I feel as though this is a really good product kind of to if you're like looking to make the step into doing some more colorful brow stuff. So like it's not as pigmented as ABH Dip Brow, which is fine too because when you're, you know, you're trying to like build it up and make it look natural or at least like you've committed enough to your hair color to dye your brows that same color. This is a really really easy to use product. I really like it. I think that this is probably one of my favorite things that I've gotten in 2018 because I literally use this every single day since I've gotten it. Speaking of other things that I've used every single day since I've gotten it, this is the NYX Epic Ink Liner in black. I don't think they make any other shades. This is definitely a Jaykissa slash Atlee made me buy it because after I decided that I kind of had to give up my Kat Von D ink liner. I was looking for a different option and this one was came like highly recommended and I really trust Jay Kissa of, of like her opinions because we tend to like the same kind of makeup. This is what I am wearing for my eyeliner right now and honestly this has made me fall back in love with wearing wing liner. When I was using the ink liner I'd used it for so long that I kind of was just like I wasn't feeling the wing liner I felt like it was a lot of effort but this makes it so easy and it is so dark. The only thing I will say is that it is a little bit more easily transferred than the ink liner but unless you're like going to the gym in wing liner I don't think that's something you need to be too worried about and this is like eight dollars whereas that one was like 20 22 so I definitely think that this is the better choice. And the last eye product that I've been loving is the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. I think that this is my new holy grail mascara. It used to be the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara, but one of the things that like I learned from that this year is, I don't know why, but it used to not transfer, but when I would put on my setting spray, it would make the mascara transfer, and that didn't used to happen, and I couldn't figure out a way to like fix that other than doing my setting spray and then my mascara. Long story short, this one I don't have that problem with. This one also came per recommendation of Jake Hissa. I think I should just do a video of stuff that Jake Hissa made me buy. Um, but yeah, this is just so beautiful. I love high-end mascaras just because their brushes are always like so thick and so fluffy. I love the look that this gives. I never wear false lashes just because like 
I don't know, I feel like there's so much effort and for me this mascara does a good enough job that I don't feel like I need false lashes. They're so like nice and fluffy and this just does really well for my lashes. I love a good thick brush. And I've said this before but I do always try and get the minis just because you know you're supposed to change out your mascara every three months and I'm not going to go through a huge tube of mascara every three months and I'm not going to pay like 20 plus dollars for that every three months. So this is kind of like a good little in-between compromise type situation. So yeah, this is just wonderful and it also really makes me want to try more products from Milk Makeup. Okay, so I have three face products that I've been loving just because I don't change up that part of me too much. So I'm just gonna share what I have. I have two highlighters, which in retrospect, in looking at them side by side now, they are almost the exact same thing. I have a type, as you can see. So this one, is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in Blossom Glow. This is like $5 and you can see that I have like made a huge dent in this. And I've had this since about February so you can see that it's just like gotten a lot of love. This is what I'm wearing on my cheeks right now. I just hadn't tried any of the Wet n Wild highlighters despite it being like everywhere on YouTube. So I wanted to give it a shot and this I think was definitely worth the money. I feel like when I first tried it out, I wasn't too sure because I didn't feel like it was showing up, but kind of once I got off that like top layer a little bit, that's when it became really, really pigmented. And I just love this shade of highlight. Like I own so many highlighters that are this color just because I feel as though that's kind of like my perfect highlighty shade because it's like a nice neutral in between. This other one might have been discontinued. It's a model's own Sculpt and Glue highlighting powder in Golden Sands, but I remember Mariah Leonard had actually mentioned this in a video about like nice wet look highlighters, and I think that is definitely true for this case. This one is a little bit more like metallic and wet, whereas this, whereas the Wet n Wild one is a little more shimmery. So that's kind of what that looks like if you can see what it looks like in the viewfinder or in the video, I'm looking in the viewfinder. So that's kind of what that looks like. They're very similar, but this one is a little more shimmery, whereas this one is a little bit more like dewy looking, I guess. I don't know. I realize that they're the exact same shade and they're the exact same product, but they're both really inexpensive. I don't own any high-end highlighters because just like, while I would love myself a good Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector, I'm not going to pay close to $40 for a highlighter when I have like a $5 one that I feel is just as good and satisfying. And especially if I go through that as quick as I'm going through this one, I would want to spend a little less money. And the last face product that I've been really into is the Milani Baked Blush in Rose to Oro. This is what I have on my cheeks right now. It's really pretty. I like it a lot. You've probably seen me use this in just about every single one of my videos. It's just such a nice little blush. You can even probably get away with just doing this blush without any bronzer because it does have a little bit of like a glowy bronzing effect. Effect? Glowy bronzing effect on your cheeks. I don't know what else to say about this other than to just be like, it's a blush and it's pretty, so look at my face. Now let's get into some lip products. Um, I'm gonna go with the obvious one first and that is the Makeup Monster slash Menagerie Cosmetics liquid lipsticks. I have a few more but I decided to just bring with me the ones that are kind of my favorites. Uh, this is what they look like. You've seen them on me. I've raved about them. Everybody raves about them. They're coming back in January on on some time. But yeah, everybody really raves about these for good reason. These last really well. I'm almost finished with this one. This is my favorite. This is Luna. I talked about this in my last year's 2018 favorites. Well, not 2017 favorites. I talked about this in my last yearly favorites too. This is my favorite shade and I can feel myself running out of this. So I hope that this is one of the shades that they bring back just cause this is like gorgeous and I would wear this every day. I love wearing this with the Good Sport palette by ColourPop. I think this goes just like so well with it. I also have the shade Wipeout, which is like the best blue lipstick I have ever tried in my entire life. Like not exaggerating, this is such a nice bright blue color and I love it. And I have Cornucopia, which is a nice little dupe for Project Chips by Kat Von D. This is almost an exact dupe and I really, really love it. Then I have Jealousy, which is this bright green that kind of matches my hair a little bit. I've raved enough about these to feel like I don't need to say much else other than like, this is my favorite liquid lipstick formula. It stays really well. It's not super drying and I just really like it. The next liquid lipstick that I've really been loving is the one I have on my lips right now, which is 
Spring Affair by Atomic Makeup. Now I didn't care too much for this at the beginning just because it's not exactly one that's gonna last through you eating a lot of food. So that was kind of my mistake. But I will say if you have to reapply it a whole bunch, like because you've been eating a lot during the day or whatever. I was on a food tour that day. I was eating a lot of food when I was first testing this. At first I was like, this is crap. It's not lasting through all of the food that I'm eating, which unreasonable expectations here. But this is probably the most comfortable liquid lipstick that I've ever had and it is so easy to reapply. The only criticism I have about Makeup Monsters is in the rare times that you do have to reapply one of these, it's not exactly the most comfortable experience. Whereas this one, I was able to like reapply it all day, like two or three times a day, and it didn't dry my lips out, it didn't get those like little ball it didn't like ball up on my lips or anything like that. I really, really like that about it. This was really, really good and I liked how that all kind of turned out. And it also smells really good. It smells kind of like, like you know those buttercream lip smackers? Yeah, it smelled really good. So they also have some more natural colors in there, but this one. This one's my favorite. And the last two liquid lipsticks that I've been loving are more natural colors. The first one is the Milani Amour Matte Lip Cream in Loved. And this one I found as a nice little dupe for Kat Von D Lolita 2, which is something that I was kind of devastated that I would have to give up when I did because that was kind of my go-to nude shade and now this is it. And it kind of smells the same as the Atomic Makeup Liquid Lipstick. It smells very like Lip Smacker Buttercream-ish. So I really like it. Again, it's like super comfortable to wear on my lips. Some people might not find it as such. Like I'm, I can definitely tolerate a lot more of a drying liquid lipstick than most people but I think that this is really good. It it reapplies really well and it's also not it's not super expensive which I always appreciate it because I just got it like late one night when I was coming back from kickboxing and I had to drop by CVS and this is just a good look of lipstick and I would definitely recommend it because I don't think these get enough love. And the last one that I have been loving is Catnip by Anastasia Beverly Hills. I don't know if this one is still around just because I got this from a TJ Maxx for like seven dollars. I like to pair this with a pretty much palette from Colourpop just because I think that this is a nice kind of like cool toned uh, pinky shade and I've been wanting to try and find a lipstick like this for a while that like wasn't quite like a pink pink. I don't feel like I look super amazing in pink but I wanted to try something more on the pinky end of nude and this is like a nice little like cool tone lip that I think is a little bit more neutral because often what I would go to when I wanted like a more cool tone look when I was doing more cool tone eye makeup I would try and do like a monochromatic look with like a bright blue lip or like a purple if I wanted to do a look that was a little bit more toned down I didn't quite have a lipstick that would match a more toned down cool tone look so I think that this is a really really good shade and I personally like that ABH liquid lipstick formula. I know a lot of people don't, so that's kind of personal preference, but this is what I enjoy. Okay, so it is time to get into some hair products. I have three hair products that I've been loving this year. The first one is this Lunar Tide Cerulean Sea Hair Dye. This is what I have on my hair. It is my favorite hair color that I've ever had, and I think I'm going to be using this for years to come. I got this off of an Instagram ad because, you know, sometimes those analytics are just, they just hit you in your soul with something that you need and this is the perfect one. There are many, many things that I really like about this. I have like a full like demonstration review type thing that I did at the beginning of the year when I first tried this out. But well, this is what it looked like in my hair. I freshly dyed this like two days ago. So many reasons why I like this. One, my hair is super thick, but I only have to use about half of a container in order to do my entire head, which is something that I never thought would be possible. Two, that makes this really affordable. So including shipping, it is never more than $15. Um, also because there's always some sort of like promo code that you can use that'll get, that'll get you a little bit of a discount. Three, it's cruelty free and vegan. Four, it is made in Seattle, Washington. So you're supporting an indie business essentially by getting this. And another thing that I love about this is it is so, like if you're a mess like me, it is so easy to get out of the shower, get out of the bathroom, anything that it has ever gotten into when you make that mess of dyeing your hair. It's not difficult at all, like it cleans up so easily, which I really love. And I feel like this lasts like a decent amount of time too. Like a lot of the more funky hair colors, you know, you have to touch up a lot, but I use a color conditioner, which definitely helps, but I still only have to retouch this every six weeks to two months or so 
which I really like and I feel like it fades pretty nicely too and I do bleach my roots so like it does give me like the full effect but with a color like this you don't always have to which I like too so there's just a lot of love for this one I feel like this also nourishes my hair very well like a lot of hair dyes don't do that but my hair was feeling like kind of fried when I dyed my hair this last time like this just kind of helped like repair and heal it a little bit which I really really liked and then the other two hair products are from verb their sea spray and their ghost oil this is just like such a nice little combination of hair products for me. I love a good sea salt spray because I have like natural wave to my hair and this just like really kind of helps enhance it without it like weighing it down or making my hair feel crunchy or anything. So this is just really nice especially if you have like wavy or curly hair. And then the ghost oil, I love using this on my ends. I do a lot to my hair. This has really helped repair my hair a lot. I feel like what I do is I kind of just like when I get out of the shower at night, um, because I shower at night because my hair is so darn thick that I'm not like willing to shower in the morning to let it dry. I'll just like flip my hair over, run some of this through it. And when my hair, like when I wake up in the morning, the tips of my hair are so much more smooth. They don't feel like I have split ends. My hair just feels a lot healthier with this. These are just some really good products. They're a little bit more on the expensive side, but they're definitely worth the investment for me. And lastly, it is time for some skincare and perfume products. This one I'm going to say is a tentative, like, yearly favorite um, because I did only get this a couple weeks ago as evidenced by my haul video that I just posted. But this is a Mad Hippie Vitamin C Serum and in the t about two weeks since I've used this I have seen a really nice difference in my skin. I will put this on after I get out of the shower at night after I wash my face and it really just helps to kind of like smooth out my skin. I don't feel like my skin is as like rough or bumpy anymore and it helps kind of even out my skin tone too so I don't have as many like dark spots or like acne scars or anything like that. My skin has just been looking like a little bit brighter, a little bit smoother, a little bit better ever since I've been using it. So this is kind of like a tentative, I've been testing this out and really really liked it and really wanted to include it type skincare favorite. So that's my little like caveat for it but I like it. And I've also been using the Formula 10.0.6 Thirst No More Moisturizer and this has really helped my winter dry skin. So I've been trying to figure out like my skin's always been combo oily so I've always had a skincare routine that kind of matches that a little bit. Like as I get older and since I moved up to Jersey my skin has been a lot more dry so I needed like a skincare routine to kind of help with that and this has done a really good job. This is a moisturizer that is really good at hydrating your skin without making it like gross and oily so I just use this after I use the vitamin C serum and by the morning I don't have like the Sahara Desert for skin anymore. My skin is nice. I feel like I can put on like foundation, well not foundation but like a, like a nice thick concealer and like powder and I don't feel like it's going to end up looking cakey because of my skin. It just works. It does a really good job and it's really inexpensive and I feel like the skincare brand is really underrated. And the last skincare product is the Pacifica Super Flower Rapid Response Face Oil. I use that at night also after my moisturizer and by the morning like I never thought I could use a face oil. But if I let this sink in overnight my skin is just very nice and glowy in the morning. It kind of helps you know, again, it helps my makeup look a little less cakey. It just smooths out my skin, makes me feel less dry. It's just really, really nice. I got this because it said it's for all skin types and also because I think the packaging is like super cute. So like that definitely played a role in it. Yeah, long story short, this is, this is just really good. And I feel like if you want to try a, like a face oil, but you're like me and you're a little skeptical because you've always, you've like always had oily skin and whatever. I think this is a really good place to start because it's very light. It's very lightweight, so it's not anything thick or heavy. It just, just goes on there really well, so like it a lot. And the last product that I'm going to talk about is this perfume I got from Lush called Rentless. I have been wearing this just about every day since I got it. It has patchouli and tonka and something else. Patchouli and tonka are like the main things. I wear this and it is so so nice. Um, it is probably my favorite perfume I've ever tried. So one of my things that I have with a lot of perfumes is that they smell really nice for about like the first half of the day but they really wear off. This one doesn't and also one spritz goes a long way. Like I just spritz it on my wrist you know and like I'm good to go for the rest of the day so even though this was definitely one of my more expensive purchases for the year 
I know that this is gonna last me forever and I just love the scent of it. I love anything with like patchouli in it because this is also like patchouli-ish but it's also like sweet so I love those like sweet and spicy scents. I think a lot of the lush fragrances too are very unisex. Granted smells should not have a gender but especially you know if you feel like they do but you want something a little bit more you know socks. I think go to lush. I think this one is definitely on on that list. Okay so I've been sitting here filming for like 45 minutes and I had intended on filming another video but I have a dentist appointment I need to leave for in like 15 minutes and I probably shouldn't be wearing lipstick. I'd like to make her life easier. So that is it for my 2018 favorites video. I will see y'all in the new year. A lot of my videos for January, like for the first two weeks, are going to pre be pre-filmed because as I mentioned in another video, I'm going to be in Israel for those two weeks. So I'm still like, I'm going to have Wi-Fi and everything. I'm just not going to be able to film those two weeks. So those are going to be pre-filmed. I'm going to try and like interact with y'all, respond to comments, but also I'll be be pretty busy but I'll definitely talk about that trip once I get back because I'm really excited. I liked a lot of things in 2018 but the thing that I liked most is you all. Ah! That was cheesy as heck Alex. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe down below if you want to see more videos from me and I'll see you on my next one. Hope you'll have a wonderful day. Bye!